again this bulge is known as the head bulge here is the another bulge which is known as the cardiac bulge so this is the upper limb bud and here is the lower limb bud and can you see this is the tail part and these are the segmentary structure which are known as the somites so we are cutting the embryo from the pharyngeal cavity part and we are looking from the back side and from the inside so because this is the gap between the head and the cardiac bulge so this is known as the stoma stomodium or the mouth so this cavity is known as pharyngeal cavity so this cavity is known as pharyngeal cavity so what we are going to do we are cutting the human embryo from this level and then we are going to look the embryo from the back side so when you are look from when you are looking from the back side through the pharyngeal cavity so just to think what are the layers in the human body or the embryo yes you know that the outer layer is the ectoderm and the GIT is lying by the endoderm and between the ectoderm and the endoderm the mesoderm is lying in between the both so what is happening in the embryo the first mesoderm gets angry and mesoderms proliferate rapidly so what is happening the mesoderms are getting proliferation in between the ectoderm and in between the endoderm these mesoderm are growing rapidly but they are growing as a horizontal thickening yes there are the formation of the six horizontal thickening near the pharynx region this six horizontal thickening near the pharynx region they are running as a arch like structure yes these are running as a arch like structure near the pharynx so mesoderm six horizontal thickening making arch like structures known as pharyngeal arch what the point means mesoderm is the arch now try to understand yes there are the six thickenings six arches mcq but what happens later the fifth pharyngeal arch fifth mesoderm totally disappears okay so this is the another mcq which arch disappears fifth arch so what happens yes only the five arches persist suppose these are the five arches so outer layer is the ectoderm so these are in the neck region so when you are looking from the outer side so between the first arch and the second arch there is the gap between the two arch by the ectoderm ectoderm is going inside between the two arch is known as the cleft so because they are the five arches are persisting so four clefts persist okay and yes inner lining of this arch these fingers are the arch outer layer is the ectoderm ectoderm is going inside known as the cleft while the endoderm is bulging outside between the two mesoderm between the two arch that is known as the pouch because they are the five arch so between these five arches there are the four gaps so four clefts are there and the four pouches are there we are going to see that diagram yes see here in the same image now we are going to look this diagram exactly from the back side so can you compare this diagram will appear in this way yes the same diagram is made by the Inder Birsing our first year embryology book in this image we are looking the pharyngeal cavity exactly from the back side so the outer lining is the ectoderm inner lining is the endoderm and in between that two there is the mesoderm and mesoderm is getting thickened and making the six thickenings here you can see in the image and they are running just like the horizontal running structures so these are known as the arch while just to observe in this diagram between the two arches the ectoderm is going inside that is the cleft so between first and second arch first cleft between the second and third arch second cleft between the third and the fourth arch the third cleft and between the fourth and the sixth arch there is the fourth cleft and the same way the pouch is nothing endodermal out bulging between the two arches is known as the pouch so there are the again four pouches are there and can you observe in this diagram within each arch there are the four components are developing in this image you can see the three components but actually there are the four component yes nerve component arterial component muscular component and the skeletal component these are also known as the elements okay so now we are going to observe the same diagram in our linear diagrammatic presentation here the both images for your better concept from the interview scene and the animated image has been kept okay so we are going to draw this diagram in a easy linear way so that you can make your concept so draw the diagram 
try to understand when you will look this arch from the front they are looking as a horizontal thickening but when we will cut from the middle part you can say the coronal section and you are looking from the back side so you are looking the pharyngeal cavity from the back side so you will see only the rounded structure one round second round third round fourth round and the same symmetrical structure on the opposite side also so in diagrammatic way how can you draw the diagram yes suppose this is the first arch which is connecting together as a horizontal thickening yes in the same way there is the second arch which is connecting together then third and then fourth and then sixth but what is happening due to the section yes the middle part will disappear the middle part will disappear so only we will see the rounded thicknings that's why in our diagrams it is just only made by the round ring these red color structure is known as the mesoderm remember in standard textbook like the langman larson embryology gray's anatomy the standard color for the embryology red color means mesoderm yellow color means endoderm and the blue color means ectoderm so this red color structures they are showing the rounded running thickening due to the section we are not drawing the central part now see this is the ectoderm so this is the blue color which is indicating the ectoderm ectoderm is getting in between it between the two arch so this is the ectoderm yes 1 2 3 4 so these are the ectoderm and yes blue yellow color yellow color indicates the endoderm so this is the endoderm which forms the pouches we are going how these are making the pouches so this is the diagrammatic presentation now see there is the one thin membrane like structure in the pharyngeal cavity where there is the no mesoderm so that structure without no mesoderm is making the line membrane between the buccal cavity and the pharynx that is nothing that is the bucco pharyngeal membrane this is the bucco pharyngeal membrane remember this bucco pharyngeal membrane and the cloacal membrane you will see in the anal canal development later only the two parts are there which are having the no mesoderm mcq the bucco pharyngeal membrane and the cloacal membrane no mesoderm now see here for your additional knowledge the first arch is the only arch which is also lined by inner side with the help of the ectoderm so this knowledge we will be we will use for the development of the tongue so now see this is the arch red color means mesoderm it is running horizontally but the middle part due to the section we are not drawing so this is the first mesoderm means first arch while this is the yes second arch here is the third arch here is the fourth arch and this is the sixth arch why because the fifth arch totally disappeared now see the ectodermal in dipping yes can you see the ectodermal in dipping between the two arches i am using the black color to highlight yes ectoderm is going inside between the two arches that is known as the cleft so these structures are known as the cleft so this is the first cleft here is the second cleft here is the third cleft and here is the fourth cleft so this is another mcq how many clefts are persisting in the human embryo your answer is the four now can you see the endoderm yes the endoderm is out bulging between the two arches you are looking from the inside this cavity is nothing this is the pharyngeal cavity and when you are looking the pharyngeal cavity from the inside the endoderm is out bulging between the two arches that is known as the pouch so this is the first pouch here is the second pouch this next one is the third pouch while this one is last fourth pouch so we are going to this structure later we will see one more thing that the area where the ectoderm and endoderm are meeting together with very little amount of the mesoderm that area is known as the pharyngeal membrane yes this is known as the 
pharyngeal membrane okay so after this basic knowledge now write down your notes yes what i told you till now first of all pharyngeal apparatus pharyngeal apparatus is equal to pharyngeal arch plus pharyngeal cleft plus pharyngeal pouch and one more thing that is the pharyngeal membrane so this is one mathematical equation for you okay next high yielding line that pharyngeal arch is mesoderm pharyngeal cleft is ectoderm here your trick is ecto is having the t and cleft is also having the t so you can take the help of the t now the pharyngeal pouch is the endoderm while the pharyngeal membrane it is the meeting point in between mesoderm ectoderm and the endoderm yes ectoderm and the endoderm meets together with very little amount of the mesoderm in intervening area so this is the short facts about the pharyngeal apparatus yes you can define the pharyngeal apparatus A special structure developing near pharynx are you getting the point because it is developing near the pharynx that's a pharyngeal and yes it is made up of more than one component yes made by more than one component that's why it is known as the apparatus i am not using the bookish language just for your understanding purpose so what is the pharyngeal apparatus yes just break the name pharyngeal definitely it is developing near the pharynx and why you are saying the apparatus because it is having more than one component so now one by one first we are going to talk about the pharyngeal arch so write down the pharyngeal arch 